one of the best that I've used. It's about $130. And, um, hey guys, it's Austin here with uh, Northland Adventures. And I'm going to talk to you about a pole I like using out on the water pretty much on a daily basis. And I'm going to talk about a reel also. And I'm going to show you a couple lures that I like to use as well. So I got here, this is a uh, six gill pole. It's the Mayaka. This is a seven foot medium heavy. And I basically use this for frogging or mostly either frogging or I'll use it for crankbaits as well. Um, it's a pretty light pole. I like using it a lot. I mean, it's not heavy or anything. And it's got these core candles, which are really nice, especially when your hands get wet. You, they don't slip off, you know, it's really easy compared to some poles have like plastic here. So when you get wet, you know, and you get a big hook set, you know, you might slip or something. But with these core candles, they're really nice because, you know, it has a lot of grip. And um, they also use these micro guides here. So these micro guides help a lot with basically reeling in and retrieving and basically when you're reeling in it doesn't it prevents your line from it might spool up or your line might just it might over drag and then you'll get a lot of knots and stuff in your bait caster when you're using it so these help a lot with your line so uh, the other thing I like using is the is the six gill it's the Creus reel here that I got this is a seven zero to one ratio uh, I like using this a lot. This also comes with the cork handles and the one good thing about that too is you know your hands a lot of the time it uh, you know it slips off because your hands get wet usually if you're catching fish or whatever you know and uh, and these are also really lightweight so I like these a lot. Uh, the has really good drag and then if you pull this lever back if you pull this lever back here and you slide it and pull it off very so then inside of there you have a braking mechanism and inside there you can switch these little orange clips here to change how much braking you have so when you use this here when you the more braking you have the less of a chance you have for backlashing when you're casting so that's nice too it's just an easy quick setting you know all you got to do is take this here and then you would just flip it in to make more breaks and then when it comes out it's less breaking so you can always do that and that's nice and then you know you just reattach that back on just like so and that's ready to go also these poles you know they're they're just pretty lightweight and they're really easy to use so I like I mean this is one of the better poles I've ever used you know between Abu Garcia, St. Croix you know any of those other poles and the price range on this is about $160 so it's a pretty good price range for a pretty quality pole so if you ever want if you're interested even looking at these poles you know you can check out Six Gill also you can check this out on uh, Six Gill's website which is www.sixgillfishing.com and these Creus reels here, they run for, they run right about a hundred bucks or so, a little more than a hundred bucks. So it's a pretty good price range. It might be a little steep for some people, but you know, if you want a quality pole that's not a heavy pole that you know isn't going to break on you when you're out, you know, fishing a tournament or whatever, just fishing out, doing whatever you want. You know, these are good, reliable poles. You know, you can always check them out. All right, so one of my lures I like using is a uh, it's a popper frog made by Booyah. So it's right here, and the front there, that's the popper part. You know, you can have regular frogs that have just a regular nose. And these poppers work good. You know, they make air bubbles. They look like, they look more real than maybe just a regular frog. Uh, this is one of the most th lures I throw, basically. Like this is probably, I throw this 60-70% of my time out on the water. You know, you throw it on weed beds. You throw it on top of grass on the water. You might throw it up by logs, you know, they're really shallow. These work pretty much you know, foot of water to maybe even five foot, six foot of water, you know, maybe even more, you know, if how the fish are swimming, but, uh, well, one thing I do is, you know, like right here is another frog just like it, and we, we trim the, the reason that we trim these legs back here is because 
you know, if you have these really long legs, the fish might come out of the water and they'll only grab to here on these legs. So, you know, we try trimming them back, you know, pretty far. I mean, I could probably trim these a little bit more, but when you have the legs really long like this, the fish might come up and, you know, if they're only grabbing, if they come up out of the water, they might grab to right here. Whereas if I have that much taken off, they're going to come here and they're actually going to grab that whole body instead of just the legs. So I have missed, you know, lots of fish keeping these legs really long. So, you know, you just take some scissors and you just kind of trim them back. You know, some guys, they, what they like doing is they'll just fold these legs here, the whole body length, hold it, and then they'll cut it right at the nose. And that's what they, you know, the same length as the body. You know, and I, that's about what is done here on this one. You know, you fold these back, you know, and it's basically right about the body, maybe a little bit more. So, and I've had a lot of success with these. These are Booyah frogs, and these run about 5 $6 a piece, you know, pretty good price range. And the other thing I like with these, too, is they have a white belly. The white belly is a big key factor, at least here in Iowa. You know, you run these white belly frogs is just, they stand out better than if you had a black belly or a red belly or whatever else. I think it's just the lighter color the fish like more than a darker bellied frog. So the other lure I like using too, this is a KVD crankbait. It's a KVD 1.5. It's a Kevin Van Dam lure. Uh, you know, this is this is a square bill here. This is a really nice lure. Works a lot. You know, I throw this basically in rocks. Uh, maybe, you know, shallower waters. That's not too weedy. Um, the one good thing about these square bills is when it's in the water going, this nose actually tilts down and that hook comes back right behind the bill. So if you ever go over any rocks, logs, sticks, whatever, usually it'll, it'll bump off and go over instead of you know other crankbaits you know the hooks might hang down here and then as they're going you will catch on a rock or whatever you might lose your lure so that's the one good thing about these square bills they work really nice uh, this is usually about this swims about three to six foot of water or so so you know it's for a shallower shallower use but this is also a really nice lure all right, the last lure I like using a lot is the uh, Power Bait Power Worm. And we have it rigged up, you know, just like so. Uh, you know, this is a 10 inch worm here, made by Power Bait. You know, these packages right here. So, uh, the biggest thing I think with these, you know, these work a lot basically because I think they're blue, they're black with just the blue fleck material in it. And the other thing is, you know, you got the blue tail right here, which also works really nice. Um, you know, we have this rigged up on, it's a uh, worm, a locking bend hook. It's right here, it's a locking bend hook. Alright, so the one good thing about these is when you tie these hooks with the snell knot, which I'll show you in a different video, is, you know, if you're pulling this through the water like so, and a fish comes and grabs onto it, when you yank up, it actually pulls this hook up like this. And then, you know, so it'll actually go up instead of, you know, before if you rip on your, if you rip on your pole or whatever, pull on it, you think you got a fish, it might come out like this or it might twist or turn. Whereas with the snell knot, you know, if your fish's mouth is right here, it'll turn it up and then it'll pull and actually grab and sink into the fish's mouth better. So I have this hooked up here with just a 3 8, three eight ounce uh, sinker, it's just a bullet sinker. This one's black, you know, they come in different colors. You can get them in red, you can get them in silver, whatever. And also along, I have a, it's a bobber stopper, which is on the end right here. And what that does basically, it just, you know, it stops the sinker from moving beyond that. And this can just slide down so you can slide it really close. Otherwise, you know, you can push it up and have it farther. But that prevents the sinker from Maybe if you have it, don't want it to come all the way out to here and getting caught underneath maybe rocks if you have this sitting on the bottom or, you know, if you get just hooked up in something in the water, you know, this helps prevent that since it's real close. And I usually like running it, you know, maybe, you know, maybe an inch or so away from the whole, the worm itself. So it sits something just like that in the water, you know, and then you can just run this to the water. You just kind of slowly, you know, raise up on it, let it fall, raise up, let it fall. And you know that helps out a lot too. So this helps. This 
this was a big factor in a lot of the tournament wins we had last year too was this setup right here so so yeah thanks guys for watching these videos if you like them you know you can subscribe and we have more videos that will be coming out you know we'll keep up on this and uh, I hope you liked it and enjoyed it so thanks